we kind of consider it like an exploita exploitation, explore, explore, what's the word? Explore, explore. Oh, explore, 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 explore. Oh, you are rapping. Hi, welcome to the new unboxing of the Nanimati. This is episode three. I'm Fiorella. And I'm Chris. Okay, I guess we've established that. Ah. So we want to take you to the Athenaeum. That's the place where Professor Penn worked and where we shot Shira down underneath it and meet the artists that are working on it there. We want to introduce you to Matteo Mariuzzo, who has been working on Archi since the beginning of the project. And he did a lot of cool illustration of the book. And Riccardo Tenani, a young artist working nearby Torino, who did lots of scenes of the exterior and the interior of the Athenaeum. We're going to meet these two guys on the uh, middle board where they put up all their artwork and things like this. But first, we want to talk a little bit about the Athenaeum itself and what you find in it. I mean, it's, it's really interesting. It's way up in the mountains. And yes, and don't forget, the mountains are full of tickle worms holes. And the, the tickle worm holes go all through the planet and everything. And at the Athenaeum, they keep filling in the holes with new architecture that arrives. Yes, and today I brought something from the Athenaeum Ooh. for you. And I brought... A calculus pigatus. <laughs> this is a cut. <laughs> this is. <laughs> what have you got there? <laughs> She's attacked. But ah! Are we ready? No. Episode five. Rendezvous at Skull Rock. and a shiny metal block made of strangely scored metal bars appeared from between his columns to float in front of the giant triumphal arch. This is Calculus Piegatus, who comes from a line of devices that are one of the oldest family in the realm of the Inanimati. For a split second, the glowing bars hovered above them, its clicks becoming a buzzing sound that grew louder until with a final woohoo! From Archi and a metallic snap from Piegatus, all three friends and the metal bars vanished into the darkness. So, well, last time you brought a feather, mm -hmm. and this time you have a... This time I have a Calculus Pigatus. That explains everything. <laughs> it's actually a, a carpenter's ruler, you know. It, it's made of metal, which you don't see very often, but I think that's what it is. It looks like, but this is the key to Arky's journey to travel through time and space. Ah, a time machine! No, it's not a time machine. This is much more than that. This is a fraction of a much wider concept we perceive just a little bit of. Like bigger concept, like, like this way bigger or that way bigger? This way bigger. Ah, this way bigger. And so is it an old thing, a new thing, or what is it? It represents a much bigger entity, and it is the empowerment of decision-making of time and space. And how many like layers does it take to get to where we are in our story? So we start with the concept of the universe. And then a lot of things happen before we go to the one of dimensions. And under the concept of dimension, we find a lower layer, which is the one of reality. As we know, reality got split into three, and we find the one of the inanimati, animati, and spiriti. And calculus piegatus, we find in the one, in this case, of the inanimati. So this instantiation, like it looks like a, a carpenter ruler because that's how it's instantiated mm -hmm. to look, but it goes all the way back like way, 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 way back to the, the like origins of the universe, okay? Mm -hmm. And then yes. down all the way down through the, the dimensions until you get to the one dimension called reality, but it's not everybody's reality because it got split, right? Okay, and now we're in Archie's world, you know? This is acting like a line judge, a guardialine in Italian, of time and space. But as we said, its origin goes all the way back to the universe beginning. And there's a reason why at the beginning of the universe, uh, objective measurement like Calculus Pigatus is doing mm -hmm. uh, is, is important, right? It has to do with the purpose of the universe. As we know, at the beginning, we have perception, whose purpose is the one who perceives. And she perceives objective as well as subjective measurement. And who's doing the, who's doing the subjective? The seven flavors of meaning. Seven flavors of meaning, like chocolate, strawberry, no. <laughs> We'll let that go for now. Okay, so Persepia, who, who gifts the universe with the, the power to perceive, and that's actually the purpose of the universe, is to perceive, along the way needs these line judges or somebody who's going to keep track of objective things and subjective things. 
and uh, Calculus Pegatus is the one for the objective stuff. We find Calculus Pegatus in the Athenaeum, which is a place far away from Palimpsest, where Archie is from, and he's close to a big book called the Fabula Rerum, the story of things. The Calculus Piegatuses are watching the borders of realities because these books allow all the possibility of the universe to come in and be transcribed in it as long as they unfold. They unfold in, in, from possibility into reality, you mean? Yes, and the reality becomes much more detailed and you can see all the granularity of it as long as you go in, down in the details. So, possibilities come in, the ones that are picked in the fabular realm become the reality, then ta -ta 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 -ta. it goes down granularity levels, like all the way down to you can't perceive it anymore, I suppose, like subatomic level or something like that, right? Correct. And that defines the borders of reality. And these borders are kept apart by... Calculus by, by this guy, right? Is it just one of them? No, there are many of them. Ah, all right. And I suppose it's in the interest of the inanimati to keep those borders as far apart as possible, right? Yes, and because of these powers, actually some of them are stolen. That's kind of like a subplot, right? Yes. Okay, we don't give that away. So, Calculus Piagatus that we're finding in the Athenaeum is actually one of the first characters that we created way back in the podcast days. And the interesting thing about that is the, the character creations that we work on work the same way as we do in design. We start with a, a pyramid of why things are the way they are, and under that are the how they are, and they have to be contained in why or they wouldn't happen. And that works its way all the way down to what the thing actually is. So this why, how, what works in design, and it also works in defining characters for, for the inanimati. And it's really, really important to start always with the why. Take, for instance, an egg beater dancing. That would be a what? That would be a what. If we start with the what and we go all the way up to the how and we easily arrive to a why, but we can be misled and we wind up in a world of magic and fantasy, which is not what inanimati are. But if we start with the why of the inanimati, we know there is no magic and no superheroes. So we know well how the how works and we wind up with a what, which might be, again, a neck beat of dancing. But the why we started from, it's completely different. Yeah, it's important that, you know, things are always taken from the why on down because, like Theo says, if you start with a detail at the bottom and then try and extrapolate out of it, things come apart quickly. They don't all follow the same sort of logic and you can't keep a world together. And so starting at the bottom is, is not really the right way to do it. It's kind of like the, the, the tail wagging the dog. You, you don't want to do it. But right now, let's go talk to Ricardo and Matteo on the mirror board. Let's go to mirror board then. And we're at the mirror board now with our two artists. So we can say, hi, Ricardo. Hello. Ciao, Matteo. Hi. Thanks, guys, for joining us. Uh, as you can see, we have lots of things going on on their artwork on the board. It basically encompasses everything from inside the Athenaeum to outside the Athenaeum. And I think we'll start sort of where we left off with Professor Penn and Calculus Piagatas. Matteo, what are those theater lodge all around it? Those are uh, different copy rooms for the scribes. They started as uh, a theater gallery where uh, the audience called assist to the unfolding of uh, reality, but has been uh, taken over by copy rooms. There's a lot of copying going on in there. As we move through the interior of the Athenaeum, can you tell us some of your thoughts about the architecture here? Yeah, well, one point for me is very important in Fabularion because on, only in the inanimate world, the point of view change your mind because Guelphi and Pen is a different size, is a different object. The Pen is normal, is small, and Guelphi is a big tower. You, you mentioned Guelphi. She's an actual architectural tower, right? Mm -hmm. And she's much bigger than Professor Penn. That's the drawing you have. You can see the scale sizes, right? Yeah. This is uh, the same place, uh, but from a different uh, point of view. One is uh, from Professor Penn in uh, the floor. You see this column is a big column and a huge environment. 
but the same place from another point of view, from wealthy, you see the environment is small, is, is different. And this is a change for a script writer and creative guys. Yeah, and it's all happening in the same place. Yeah, that, that must be really interesting how they walk around among each other and don't get squished and <laughs> things like that. And speaking about point of view, Ricardo, I see you applied this one also to your sketches, right? Yeah, we first noticed that in the city of Palimpsest. And with these sketches, we started to explore how they see their city uh, could evolve. Considering, but it, it is not just a matter of scaling things down or scaling things up, making big stairs or t tiny stairs. Um, that's not just that, at least. Ricardo, is that Guelphine crossing the bridge there? Yeah, yeah, she is. We use the same principle in the Ateneum as well. In, in this sketch, we can see Guelph, who is a pretty big tower, actually, but she's looking real small compared to the ancient architecture of the Ateneum. And speaking about the exterior and the architecture of, of, uh, of the Ateneum, we try to imagine how architecture could take ho cover the, this, this hole eaten by a tickle worm. And there are many more tickle worms tunnel diving deep in the mountain. What we see here is the, the very top of the Ateneum. This tickle worm hole that we see in the image is filled with architecture. And you did this in virtual reality, didn't you, Ricardo? Yeah, yeah, absolutely, I did. I also have a clip of me building the, um, the Ateneum in virtual reality. Um, see, yeah, basically there are layers upon layers upon layers of complexity. They, they are starting to fill all the available space in the tunnel. But the Ateneum is not only growing in size, it's always growing in, um, in complexity because there are several layers of different sizes of uh, architecture. But architecture has a different reason for being there than just following function, okay? They are just there because they wanted to be there. Can I, can I ask you, uh, Ricardo, in the VR, you can see pieces floating in space here. These are the ones you're picking to build it from, right? Yeah, absolutely. I build the, um, the assets in another software and just I using them to assemble my scene. So it's basically like building with Lego, but on a huge scale. Yeah, doesn't it, doesn't it make you get like seasick? I mean, are, aren't you afraid to be so high up? Because when I'm, I see this, it looks like you're like a thousand miles above the ground. Well, well, not really, but still, I would say that it is an acquired taste because you have to, you really have to get used to to VR because you get motion sick sick very very easily. But now it feels very natural. It is way more natural than working in traditional software. We're going to move the, um, across the middle board, which is the nice thing about this way of seeing the stuff. You can zoom out, move rapidly to the other side of it. And here we see the exterior that almost looks like a mountain that has this big tickle worm hole at the top of it. And uh, tell us something about this, Ricardo. Yeah, it is actually a mountain. And you know, Treddy, the, the word of treddy, it is. It doesn't look like like the hurt, like our words. If you were to see it from the space, it would look like more up of a um, geometric shape, sort of low poly sphere. Okay, so we thought that maybe this could be reflected in uh, its landscapes as well. It's kind of pump, pumping out, po poking yeah. through it. And as you see from above, you can see it sits above a lake, Lake uh, Lake Duplicity. Yeah, we see. We, we are seeing the lakes from the Monique's balcony. Uh, this is the Blissed Lake. And in the middle of the Blissed Lake, there is the, the Wonk Winch of the West. And uh, you can see the, the chains, they are connected to the two, two boats, one red and one blue. There are, those are the pirate penguins boats. The pirate penguins. Another fantastic proto-animal that we have here in our story. And um, we'll move over now to, uh, thanks Ricardo. We're gonna move over to a close-up of the Wonky Winch. And uh, this is done uh, here by Matteo. And the wonky winch, is it, it's not an animal, it's just a big thing, right? Yes, it is a complex mechanistic uh, building with uh, gears uh, and chains. And this element uh, is important from, uh, for the pirate penguin. And it lets the chains out and the pirate penguins go over the waterfalls, right? Yes, yes. 
the two boats uh, are the possibility to go to up and down in the ticket worms and uh, discover uh, any treasure. That's cool. Okay, well, that, that's actually a lot today, um, uh, and there's lots more to discover. We'll come back to the Athenaeum, and we'll come back to you two guys. So, so thank you very much. Yes, thank you, Matteo, and thank you, Ricardo. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Bye. Bye. Ciao, ciao. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. It's always nice to go meet the artists who are actually doing the work, uh, creating all this stuff. And on the middle board, it's a nice place to see that. And, uh, you know, I, I, we should go next time. No, what? next time we don't go anywhere. Next time... We answer our viewer questions. What do you mean we answer viewer questions? But we don't have enough shows to actually have viewers to have questions. Yes, but the questions come from the inanimati. The inanimati are writing us questions? Yes, they have lots of questions for us. <laughs> okay, I don't know how that's going to work. Yes, a little Q&A for them. Okay, next time we're going to have Q&A with the inanimati. Are you sure about that? Sure. Okay, Q&A with the inanimati on the next unboxing the inanimati so until then ciao ciao, ciao.